Thank you very much and welcome. Um, I have a presentation and uh, we call it the Danish fire. Um, but more importantly, um, how do we get away from all our legacy standards in Denmark? And we uh, made this sentence that says we, we're going to fire all the legacy. Uh, I work in the organization called Medcom, which is a publicly owned standard organization in Denmark. And we started to have interest in fire back in 2016, where this picture is from. Uh, we have uh, during 29 years made standards in Denmark and um, we found out we had to modernize in, in three different uh, aspects. Um, the first one is about uh, the standard and the semantic interpretability. Um, we started back in 1990 with some prescriptions and uh, the Medcon organization was founded in 1994. And since then, we have been do, uh, developing more and more artifacts, uh, and they still run in production uh, big time in Denmark. Uh, in 2005, we made a, uh, a change for XML standards in Denmark. They are locally defined in Denmark as cannot be used anywhere else. That was a very bad strategy. Uh, so we decided 10 years ago to change everything into HL7. And in 2014, uh, we started with document sharing, with uh, XDS sharing in Denmark, and that was uh, with the use of CDE standards. But we decided to modernize everything and leave everything uh, written in uh, native Danish language. Uh, so now everything is uh, written in English because everybody in Denmark understands English and all the vendors uh, uh, told us uh, don't write anything in Danish because we develop in India or worldwide. Uh, so our messaging, uh, we changed from Edifact and Danish XML into uh, Fire messaging. Uh, we have some web services we use for XML standards. We change that into some uh, fire services and we have a uh, document sharing. And until last week, the health authorities uh, required it to be CDA, but luckily they changed their uh, strategy and allow us to uh, profile in fire documents as well. Yeah, it has been, it, we used three or four years to persuade them to, to accept fire uh, documents. But that, that was the one thing we tried to modernize in Denmark. And the other track is about infrastructure. Uh, we have a very old uh, network, uh, a commercial network with different private operators who exchange the, the messaging in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, and along that, we have a nationally owned uh, infrastructure for the uh, the service-based uh, infrastructure and uh, the Medcom in Denmark is responsible for that national backbone network for services. Uh, and we run the document sharing upon this uh, local backbone network. Uh, and the last thing we have in our infrastructure is uh, terminology. We just heard uh, Graham talk about we have a need for a terminology server and uh, I agree totally with him. We have some web pages where people can download spreadsheets and uh, uh, manually update their systems with new terminology versions. <clears throat> so we also modernize our infrastructure uh, with a new one. We call it uh, EHMI uh, that is built upon European standardization for infrastructure with the e-delivery project which is uh, used within the health domain, but also in other domains. We decided to call it eDelivery Plus because we build upon it and we add some extra functionality. For instance, track and trace, where is my message? When I expect it to get to the hospital and it doesn't arrive, where is it stuck? How do I uh, fix this? <clears throat> And then um, 
we take all the classifications where we can uh, structure them in fire and publish them on a fire terminology server. We have a third thing we modernize, and uh, that's not the technical part, but it's also an important uh, issue for us. And that is how we uh, work, how do we develop standards, how do we test and certify all the vendors for following and complying to the standards. So we have a very well-documented uh, uh, quality management uh, book uh, explaining these things and uh, Wednesday we have it audited, we get an audit of it every year. Um, we have been uh, using these uh, ISO 9001 processes since 2015 for testing and uh, certification processes uh, and three years ago we expanded it with, we describe how do we develop a standard how do we involve clinicians and vendors? Um, about test is special when we talk about fire. Um, we have been testing for many years in Denmark. We tend to, to find the scope for what do we test when we test semantic interability. Uh, and in the bottom of the of this uh, graph, you can see, see the technical parts and the infrastructure that's uh, very easy to test and we can use some test tools for that. And for fire, we use Touchstone. Um, we also have to test the semantics. Uh, what do we integrate? What data do we share? And uh, you can also test some of this in the, the automatic test tools like Touchstone. Uh, but we also make a uh, meeting with the vendors. We want to see the solutions with our own eyes to ensure they uh, update to the newest versions of uh, classifications, for instance. And then we take a little step into the care processes. And we were we very, um, uh, what to say, we, we don't want to have uh, requirements to, to use the interface. Uh, uh, but we, we need to ensure that the semantics is understood by the receiver. So we test and certify manually, is it understandable? Will the user understand receiving or viewing certain data? Um, so that's in scope, but what is out of scope is, where do you place it in your user use interface? What kind of font do you use and colors and things like that? But this is a overview of our standard catalog in Denmark is not all the standards we have, but it's the groups of the most important uh, standards. And it's things like referrals and discharge letters, and there are multiple uh, differential uh, versions of this, whether you send a referral for a hospital, or it's a referral to the uh, a private specialist, or for a psychologist, for instance. So right now we have uh, individually uh, implementation guides for each type of referral. And we expect to uh, um, uh, make fewer versions. So one referral type can be for different uh, use. Um, we have the uh, area around laboratories with lab orders and lab reports including an, an analysis catalog of what uh, each laboratory can, uh, can produce. We have the area of reimbursement from the primary care and Denmark. We send it for the, for the regions who have to pay the uh, general practitioners. We have the area around uh, uh, hospitals and when you are discharged back to your home, uh, the municipalities have to take care about your patients at your home and uh, standards like notification of admission and discharge, uh, but also reports of admission and end of treatment. They share uh, a lot of information and today that is with use of messaging. Um, during the years, some came to us with a requirement that we need to exchange uh, binary objects like PDF files or images. 
Uh, so we have a special standard for just transporting a PDF or a picture. Uh, I haven't seen that in other countries uh, made the same way as we did in Denmark, so probably we should reconsider that approach. Um, there's another standard that's also a typical Danish uh, invention, I think. It's called uh, care communication. It's a sort of clinical email. Uh, we could use the mail system in a secure way, but uh, using a, a message type and uh, that gives the benefit of receiving the data it's included in your own uh, record system for documentation. And the last area is about uh, sharing whole uh, health records between hospitals and between uh, general practitioners or between uh, the municipalities where citizens uh, live. So all of this is uh, developed in messaging and a few of these also exist as service-based service uh, uh, chains of data. This is how it looks today. Now I will show you a slightly other plan or other slide here where um, I hope you can see the colors. I know some can be colorblind, uh, excuse for that. Uh, but it's a, it, it might try to illustrate where do we see um, the approach ahead? Where should we continue to use messaging? Where should we use uh, RESTful APIs instead? Um, where should we bo do, uh, use both? It's not a choice between paradigms. Uh, we will see a lot of scenarios where we will use two paradigms. For instance, if you send a lab result from the laboratory to the general practitioner, it will be sent as a message. Uh, but we also upload a, uh, an information to a national repository so the citizens have access to all their lab results. Um, this presentation is, is uh, a lot about fire and uh, the content of the messages or documents or services. It's not um, so much about infrastructure, but there's one thing I would mention about infrastructure is because we send it with e-delivery, uh, we send it as fire, we have it uh, collected at a national single point in Denmark. Um, and that fire uh, representation of all the messages exchanged, we uh, connect it to the XDS registry so that uh, everybody who have a need for seeing the data can see the full flow of messages. And that's uh, a good idea for the patients that can follow whenever a referral is sent or a discharge that is sent, the citizens have access to all data at the same time as it is, uh, is uh, made. Yes. As you can see, um, a lot of the standards, uh, um, we found out that we need to go away from messaging. And that's, uh, for instance, like reimbursements, we're going to make that as a fire service uh, all over and um, phase out everything about messaging. And we also expect in the area where we share doc documents or full records between systems, it's going to be a, a full migration into um, service-based exchange of data. Um, the blue color is uh, referral types or laboratory orders where we think we're going to end up with having two paradigms um, transporting the same data or sharing the same data. But is it complicated? Yes, it is complicated. One thing we decided um, up front was that um, we modernize our standards and we modernize our infrastructure. Should we bundle that in one big project or make two individual projects? And uh, we chose um, the wise decision, I think, to 
to go forward with uh, infrastructure or go forward with uh, changing our message types or both, but they were not uh, dependent upon each other. And that was whenever the health authorities all decided to debate something, we could move forward in the other modernization track. And then hopefully they join together uh, at a point in time. So that is my advice to others who also have to change all the legacy. Um, um, and we found out that the approach to this modernization, we, we can't just make it a, a technical upgrade. Um, if the clinicians can't see what's the benefit in this, uh, if their screens uh, use interface shows the same data, why spend a lot of money uh, making a better integration or better technical solution? So we, we found the, the old message types we had where we knew there was a lot of uh, a need for uh, change in, in the content of the message. And we also uh, said we had to start somewhere. We have to select some message types to get going. And we selected the message types where we were the most sure that the paradigm for sharing data would still be where we uh, were sending messages. And we, we don't believe that you can uh, fulfill all the use cases. We're just sharing it at a national repository, for instance, like documents or with the use of services, because whenever you, uh, give the responsibility for the treatment to another clinicians. Uh, they, they have to know, okay, now it's my turn to take care of this patient. Um, and there's a lot of scenarios where we have to address that. Uh, we still need some messaging somewhere. Uh, but there's a lot of places where we don't need messaging. The other complicated thing is, uh, how do we make this transition with a bunch of uh, vendors and a bunch of systems? We can't do it at one time. Big Bang is just simply not possible. Uh, that means that we will have to uh, bridge our old infrastructure with our new infrastructure so that people can change their applications uh, from time to time whenever it's uh, a good time for them. Um, so we bridge the infrastructure. But the, uh, the, um, the world we see into where we have uh, different uh, versions or different uh, um, technology for messages, we, we, we can't uh, avoid uh, mapping. Mapping is always uh, difficult, but we, have, we haven't could uh, find any better way. We tried a lot of uh, analyzers, but we ended up with we'll, we'll map it. Um, the difficult way of mapping is uh, when you map from a fire message and you have to map it into the old versions for the old systems who still only are able to receive old legacy messages. Uh, it's much more easy to take an old uh, version 2 or old Edifact or whatever and map it into fire. Fire is much more flexible and uh, uh, so we have these uh, punch cards. I'm sorry for the new guys here. This is a museum ex exhibit. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually in Denmark, we have a limitation on how many characters can be in a, in a person's name or an organization's name. And that limitation is back from these punch cards. You can have uh, 70 characters in a name. Uh, and that's annoying. <laughs> The most uh, interesting uh, part in this modernization is actually uh, you have to consider, reconsider your data paradigm, how to, um, to um, uh, share your data. And it has a very huge impact on uh, systems whenever you change the paradigm. So it can be very expensive to, uh, to, to change uh, systems. Um, we have an example of a, of a national fire repository where, or a, a referral repository. And uh, there's so many systems to integrate to it. So it's very 
uh, costly to um, to change the infrastructure. And my last slide, my last slide is uh, is called sustainable modernization. Be careful not to uh, implement too many nice to have things because there's a big uh, price tag. Uh, we asked the vendors, why is this so costly? Everybody said fires geniusly. Go ahead, make it as fast as possible. Um, and then the pricing was much higher than we expected. And they explained to us, uh, in, in some com companies, it's uh, the fire knowledge. It's a one-time investment. Um, there's the use of fire messaging that is new to many people. There's a lot of uh, knowledge about API services and how to use fire that way. But there's not that many who have uh, to implement fire messaging. But the most expensive uh, part in, in this uh, migration is actually adding new functionality. Meanwhile, while you are you, while you modernize the, the technology, it's very easy to say, can't you put this in the standard and this and that, uh, and that is uh, rather costly, it seems to be. So think uh, sustainable, make new standards, but don't add too much new fancy stuff because uh, it's, the society doesn't have the money for everything. Yes? That nice. was my presentation. So thank you very much. Give me a word. So we are a bit behind schedule, but I think we can do one final of one quick question if someone has one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, what I'm wondering is, did you keep the underlying XDS structure or framework, should I say? Or did you replace that as well? No, we still have the XDS, XDS structure, uh, infrastructure, okay. and we keep, we'll keep that for at least for some years. Um, it's the health authorities in Denmark who, who uh, require the, uh, that sort of approach. Good, thank you. Uh, personally, I, I would rather change it for a service-based. Uh, uh, okay, nice. That was a quick question indeed. So thanks again. Thanks, Michael, for the presentation. And